Hey Nathan, it's Monday, November 23rd, my half birthday, and it's time for another... This week is Thanksgiving week here in the US, so Nathan, I decided to clear up some myths surrounding the holiday and its history. Side note, I think a lot of misconceptions surround US holidays like Thanksgiving or Columbus Day because their narratives are taught to us, taught to Americans as young children. And so the people who are teaching those stories, like parents and teachers, are, um, are just retelling what they were told. Therefore, most people don't even realize it when new relevant information has somewhat changed the storyline or even proven it to be totally fiction. In addition, what ends up being proven false were often details that made the colonists look a little more virtuous than they actually might have been. I guess they do say history was written by the victors. Those clever people who say things. I understand the reasoning of not wanting to, like, make the United States founders and such sound like bad people in these stories since there's people we're supposed to look up to. I don't agree with leaving out all of their negative attributes, though, because to me, it's important that kids know that, first of all, all people have faults. But at the same time, that humanity has come a long way. Okay, that's the end of the side note. On to the misconceptions. Number one, the first Thanksgiving is the story that we're thinking of. Like, happy little pilgrims and Native Americans sharing dinner together. Mm. That was a 1621 harvest celebration at the Plymouth Plantation. The actual first Thanksgiving happened two years later, giving thanks for a rainfall before fall harvest. From then on, if Thanksgiving was celebrated by any of the colonies, it was sporadic in the terms of when and how often. So it seems that it used to be that a Thanksgiving was proclaimed by a governor or by the church as a day where people would give thanks after something cool happened, like a battle victory or a good harvest. It should be noted that this practice was very common before Europeans colonized the Western Hemisphere. Before the Civil War, some states, mostly in the New England area, would either annually or randomly have a day of Thanksgiving in November. But Thanksgiving was proclaimed a national holiday on the last Thursday of November 1863 by President Abe Lincoln and has been celebrated annually ever since. It was set in place as the fourth Thursday in November, thus no longer needing to be proclaimed annually by Congress and FDR in 1941. That misconception contained a lot of misconceptions. It was like a misconception. I need to stop. <laughs> Many misconceptions surround that story of the first Thanksgiving, even if it technically wasn't a Thanksgiving, I'm gonna continue covering those. Misconception number two, this celebration was like two communities sitting down together for a meal. Okay, so in preparation for the harvest celebration, some of the pilgrim men were out shooting fowl and also just, you know, just shooting around as you do. And that alerted some of the Wampanoag, sorry for the pronunciation, um, and they alerted their leader, Massasoit, sorry for the pronunciation. He brought 90 of his men dressed up in warrior gear, just coming to see if maybe these white settlers were trying to start a war. Seeing that the smaller group of 50 people at Plymouth weren't, Massasoit had his men kill five deer and give them to the pilgrims. Then they partied and feasted with those guys for like three days. The feasts were prepared by the four adult pilgrim women, the only ones who had survived the first winter. So it wasn't like there were like big families joining together for this big feast celebration. Number three, they ate a traditional Thanksgiving meal. No one knows the exact menu for that specific harvest festival, but you can be sure that it probably wasn't cranberries, mashed potatoes, stuffing, green bean, casserole, or pie. Although there might have been some wild turkey. The animal, not the booze. They probably ate waterfowl, fish, the deer that was given to them by the Wampanoag, along with uh, corn hominy and succotash. I've mentioned in a previous misconception video as well that the pilgrims didn't dress in somber colored clothing with giant buckles. This image of them was made up during the 19th century to make them look more quaint or provincial. The Wampanoag were also not just wearing loincloths like they often are depicted, because that would just be effing crazy to do most of the year up in the New England area. No, they would be wearing much warmer clothing and just more 
more clothing. So yeah, pretty much everything about that first Thanksgiving was fabricated in some way and originates in the 1800s. The Thanksgiving holiday was adopted by Lincoln while the Civil War was still going on, perhaps as part of the effort to unite the country. To present the story of the first Thanksgiving in a pacifistic manner might have inspired some Americans to strive towards peace. And Nathan, we do know pretty well how people often need that inspiration for peace. We'll see you on Wednesday. What do you narwhals think of this tradition of painting our historical figures to be close to infallible? For respect or to instill trust? I'm not saying that we personally have to feel guilty for the things they did or to make them out to be totally evil. I just think that we can still have respect for them while at the same time understanding the cultural mindset of the time and admitting that some of the things that they did in their time would be considered deplorable now. Tell me what you think in the comments and check out some other misconception videos here. Thanks for watching and regardless of the origin, have a happy Thanksgiving.